Live from the Wigwam in Phoenix, Arizona, it's theCUBE, covering Data Platforms 2017. Brought to you by Cubol. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. I'm joined by George Gilbert. We're at Data Platforms 2017 at the Wigwam Resort just uh, outside of Phoenix, Arizona. 200 people talking about kind of a new approach to big data and we're really excited to have David C. He's the SVP of Marketing at Quobol. Join us and tell us, David, first welcome. Thank you, glad and why to be does, here. Why does the world need another big data conference? Oh, it's a great question. You know, there's obviously lots of choices, but when we, when we you know, went around the country and we talked to practitioners, what they told us was that a lot of the conferences that exist already are focused on a technology, you know, Hadoop Summit or, you know, Spark Summit, right? And so they're very focused on, you know, how to learn to use a new technology. But nobody actually really addressed your data platform. And your data platform is not just about technology, it's about team and skills and right. culture and process. And there wasn't really a forum for you know, guys and gals who, who own and run data platforms to network with their peers, to trade best practices, to talk about not just technology, but operational issues. Right. And so we decided to, you know, to fill that gap. Yeah, I love the term data ops. And I don't know if you guys coined it or piggybacked on it, but you know, DevOps you know, has been around mm -hmm. for a while and people kind of get it. But really some interesting presentations this morning about truly taking a data first approach to how you transform your business. Absolutely, yeah, you know, we, uh, you know, we're fortunate that our two co-founders uh, built the data team at Facebook. And during the course of doing that, you know, they had to deal with, you know, hundreds and thousands of users of their analytic infrastructure and, you know, all the way from Mark Zuckerberg on down, a desire to be a data-driven enterprise. Right. And as they went and, and did that, they, they learned a bunch of lessons. You know, they learned how hard it was to make that happen. And, and in particular, you know, there were a bunch of best practices that emerged. And then it turns out that because there were very few companies who were operating at that scale, they all got to know each other. And so, you know, LinkedIn and Twitter and eBay and Uber and a bunch of others, so all these guys started to network with each other, and interestingly enough, they all sort of came to sort of very similar conclusions about how they had to scale their infrastructure, what the best practices were. And so, you know, we took the step this past year to write a book, right, about data ops and about the, you know, sort of organizational and cultural, you know, shift that you have to make in order to scale big data and analytics across your enterprise. Right, a lot of great questions today too were about culture and fit and Absolutely. changing behavior and how do you measure success? Yep. Um, because those things are those things are actually harder uh, to implement than just the technology. Correct. And you know, if you if you saw the keynote this morning, you know, we really believe that complexity is just killing big data. And you know, you see people like Gartner predicting 70% failure rates of projects. I mean that's enormous, right? right? right. There's no technology or no segment of the technology business that can survive 70% project failure. Right, right. And so what it means is, you know, we have to figure out how do we solve this complexity. And you know, in Cubol's view, there's two things, right? There's this notion of data ops, which is how your IT organization works with the end user community. And then there's autonomous data management, right? Which is about, you know, basically turning over a lot of the mundane work that the data team does to machines who can do it faster, better, and cheaper. So, let's drill, sort of, or peel the onion on that one. Sure. It sounds like, um, while most of the consumer web companies that were involved in the early Hadoop-related or big data-related mm -hmm. um, technologies and, and open source them, they sort of brought a new technology out to the marketplace that mainstream organizations ideally would be able to adopt. Yeah, right. But it sounds like you looked at that and said there's a, a missing ingredient, which is the simplification of the admin and eventually, I guess, a de developer experience. Right. And that affected what you built. A absolutely, you know, when we, when we looked at, you know, sort of where we could help customers the most, it, it had to do with, you know, uh, data teams basically playing defense all the time. You know, what do they do? They walk around and they get workloads to run, but you know, they're under budget pressure. They're, you know, debugging pipelines that are blowing up. They're getting yelled at because somebody's report's too slow or a dashboard didn't get updated. And what they want to do is focus on, you know, helping to create amazing business outcomes. And one of the things that, you know, I thought was interesting this morning was every speaker whether they said it explicitly or implicitly, talked about how their data platform was a strategic mission critical asset that was central to the competitive strategy of their company. 
So that's what the data teams want to do, that's what they should be doing. But in order to get there, they have to get themselves out of the weeds. And you know, there's a lot of weeds in the big data area. Right. So what we believe is with autonomous data management, you know, we can automate, right, intelligently automate and use AI and machine learning technologies to make the work of data engineering easier, faster, cheaper, better. The, the part that I found really powerful, I took a bunch of pictures of, this, of the slides when Ashish was up, yep. talking about uh, back in the day at Facebook, you know, there were all these groups that needed data and yep. data support, and you know, there was his team that then had the data. Yep. It's really a service model, and we hear that a lot, that IT really should be, you know, it's a service model right. to their customers. And he said, it just, it was crushing them. Correct. And to reform that, so to think of the data as a platform, the data team is servicing the platform to now enable everyone to have access to the data and democratize that, yep. that use, was I thought such a great way to reframe the opportunity Absolutely. and the problem. Absolutely, and, you know, and if you, you know, talk to the attendees at this conference or you know, talk to people who read the book, I think they all have a very similar sort of reaction, which is you know, there's a bunch of you know, sort of slightly counterintuitive behaviors, right? Uh, you know, like decoupling your IT team from, you know, from the end users and, and treating the data team as sort of a platform building team. Uh, that can unleash you know, amazing efficiencies, right? And really you know, help companies achieve what they want to with you know, creating data insights. So if, if some, look we were talking earlier about how it was roughly a year ago, we picked up the, the, the sense, hard to quantify, but that everyone was like, okay, this is really complicated, let's move to the cloud and see if right. we can take the burden of you know, admin complexity off, maybe not developer complexity mm -hmm. yet. Um, so you were building for the cloud as the platform target. Um, and so the other, you know, the, the other main distro vendors, yeah. so now also got into high gear on building for the, for the cloud. How were they constrained by what they started with <laughs> on-prem? Yeah, and then, you know, it's a great question. It, it really comes down to the fact that the native architecture for on-prem and in the cloud couldn't be any more different. You know, on premise, right, you have coupled compute and storage because basically you're trying to minimize na network latency, right? So you put your compute and your storage in the same place and they build a whole bunch of software to take advantage of that. In the cloud, it's the exact opposite. In the cloud, compute is expensive, but storage is super cheap, so you decouple them, right, right? right? And you build these massive data lakes on super cheap cloud storage, and then basically you only deploy compute when you have something to do with it. And the whole goal is to use the, the least amount of compute that you absolutely need to. So in the on-prem world, you have basically a natural level of massive over-provisioning, because you provision to peak, right, your peak workload, mm -hmm. right. and then it's a utilization game, like, okay, I've got all this dead time, how do I fill in the dead time? to basically get some kind of you know, ROI on all this money I spent building a data center. In the cloud, it's the opposite. Like I just throw all the data I can up into the cloud. Whatever I need to process, I use, and I just pay for you know, literally as much compute as I need. That architectural difference means that you have a, you know, sort of uh, differences in, you know, in, in how the software works, how the orchestration works, uh, the techniques that you use to process data, you know, everything changes. And so it's really hard to build for both. And, and you know, anybody that tells you, oh, well, we have a hybrid system is telling you they have a least common denominator system because these things are so different. Right. Well, David, unfortunately, we have to leave it there. We're on a super tight schedule. You guys no have uh, given us a, a ton of great guests to go through. Right. So uh, congratulations on a great conference and, uh, and look Thanks forward for to learning here. more. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. David C., George Gilbert, I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE from Data Platforms 2017. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks for watching.